state law says by 2025, a quarter of electricity sold in Ohio must be generated by alternative energy sources. Half of that must come from renewable sources, wind, solar, hydropower, geothermal, even garbage. Ohio is developing a wind farm and a solar farm, Bill Spratley. Can renewables compete with coal, natural gas? Is the economies of scale? It could be a part. It could be a major piece of the pie, but can it take over? Well, I I personally think that Ohio is big enough. We're the 18th largest energy economy in the world. That we can do both the natural gas fracking and the development of renewable energy. I don't know that those are mutually exclusive. The economics will win out if they're even. To me, the the gas is more competing with the coal base. But, you know, the reality is that uh, we now have two and a half to three billion dollars of investment in Ohio in the six approved wind farms. Uh, if you drive into Ohio on Route 30 into Paulding County, 450 megawatts. Uh, there is up there, uh, you know, over 300 turbines that uh, are working. Uh, these are creating jobs. I think there's a lesson for the, the gas industry here about the jobs, and that is that our legislature, uh, and this was actually renewed in the Kasich budget uh, for three years, requires that if you, or says that if you use a higher percentage of Ohio materials to build a wind farm or a solar farm, then we're going to give you a bigger tax break. If you go to Van Wert, for example, a rural county, the population hasn't changed since the Civil War, Iberdrola, who's building a 350 megawatt wind farm in that county and in Paulding, is going to pay Paulding County more property tax than the top 14 property uh, taxpayers, and that includes all the public utilities. So and which holds the better promise? Is it, is it solar or is it wind? It depends on which uh, industry group you happen to be talking to at that moment. <laughs> um, they're both, uh, they both uh, uh, make a case, uh, and they both can make a case that the other is not uh, the, uh, the, the, most, the most useful. But um, e and there are certain parts of Ohio where one or the other is, is more favorable. Where, where's Some the sunny things. part? That's what I want to know. Where's the sunny part? I know there's wind everywhere. The, 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 sunny, the, the sunny, sunny part is actually the western edge is what we call insulation is okay. the amount of sunlight. But the reality is that we have 28 megawatts on grid now. We have the 50 megawatt project of in the solar. AP case. Yes, and there is much more. We are seeing huge systems. This is being privately financed with private capital. These are banks and investors. Uh, we have had at least, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of jobs that can be created. We're number two in parts that go into wind machine. We have the largest solar plant in the, the, the company. First Solar is the largest in the world until the Chinese overtake us, which they may do. So, you know, we have this great green jobs link because we make things. You know, our fuel source comes up every day in the east, and this is manufactured energy. And you know, th th that's where the, the great uh, promise is. What we need to do is solve the storage problem so that when the sun is not shining and the wind mm -hmm. is not blowing, we can effectively store renewable energy and get it off and on the grid so that people can use it. That's really the key technology to make s solar and wind more viable. Rhonda, Bill mentioned earlier on that, that other countries have diversified their energy sources and they don't fight over it. There seems to be a competing interest between the oil and gas industry and other industries that they see renewables as a threat. No, I would disagree with that. I mean, I, I don't think it's a threat. I think that uh, we have to have a diversified energy uh, policy, energy package. You have to have that. You cannot rely. No one single energy source is going to do it. And so I think that, you know, if you even look at solar and wind, uh, you're going to need natural gas to, to help mm -hmm. create some of the blades. So I think there is a sharing of the energy source. I don't view it as a competition. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, there's a crossover from natural gas to biogas technologies. And, you know, at some point in the future, because we know that uh, fossil is a finite resource compared to solar and wind, that... Uh, in biomass that, uh, you know, a lot of the technology developed on the gas side will help us on the renewable side. So I, I agree.